Okay, question. We are ready for questions or comments from the audience. You'll, you'll have to repeat the question because my hearing is not good. When you have um, one of these single states that you've got in a fluid configuration, is, does the state include all of the canopy formation things? For example, when you have the jet coming out, would you, if you did the quantum mechanics right, find that the state was all of the motion that was going on at that time, or are you continuously making transitions between states? Yeah, what he's asking is if the state uh, that you see, for example, in the fountain uh, is made of uh, a, 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 a continuously transition, so is that a, a ground state for the system? In a sense, if the fountain itself is part of the ground system, or the ground state? Yeah. Uh, it's the superfluid component, which is the ground state. You can have a moving ground state. You can think of the ground state as the vacuum uh, for, for the system, and uh, the vacuum uh, and the elementary excitations as the, uh, as the particles in the vacuum. Uh, but you can have a moving vacuum, you can have current flow in the vacuum, and uh, that's what uh, uh, gives rise to uh, uh, this effect. Uh, the what, what you're limited to is uh, uh, is pot a pure potential flow. You can introduce uh, vorticity uh, by having a small n normal core about which the fluid circulates, and if you have bulk helium, uh, you can get loss from the motion of the vortex lines. In uh, superconductors, it's uh, the uh, flux lines which uh, are uh, quantized. You can have uh, 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 a circulating current around a n normal core, and then it turns out, uh, well, in both cases, both for helium and for superconductors, uh, the vortex lines in the superfluid helium and the flux lines in superconductors are singly quantized, just one quanta of circulation in helium or uh, one quantum of uh, flux in the superconductor. If the uh, flux lines move, uh, you can get dissipation in the high field superconducting magnets uh, are designed so that the flux lines are pinned so that they can't move. And then there's no dissipation. The superfluid just flows around the normal core and there's no dissipation. in the question myself that is there two beakers both of them full of uh, helium that you prepared separately and now you bring them to close together yes and you get this effect what effect the effect that liquid helium for one beaker drips into the other beaker. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, if the uh, if the beaker is free it'll just drip off the bottom as indicated on one of the slides, if the beaker di dips into uh, bulk helium, it will, uh, if the uh, level of the helium in the beaker is above the bath, it will leak out into the bath. If it's the level is below the bath, the helium from the bath will 
climb up the walls and tend to fill the beaker until the levels come the same. I would like to ask a question myself. Uh, here in Wisconsin, we have been interested in the uh, uh, issue of uh, whether the high TC materials are Fermi liquids or not. And we did not see any evidence that they are not. What is your opinion about this question? Are they Fermi liquids? Uh, well, I think they're marginal. <laughs> I think they're marginal Fermi liquid. Uh, uh, in a Fermi liquid, the uh, the quasi-particles get uh, better and better defined as you approach the uh, Fermi surface. And that doesn't seem to be, ca be, be the case in these, that the, uh, they seem to be worse and worse defined. And so it's uh, uh, the, uh, what I call it a Fermi liquid, it's a marginal Fermi liquid. Thank the speaker again.